Who's firing? God damn it! Yeah. I ordered a whole fire. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Pokemon trainers all. Today I have something very exciting for you. I have taken a new technique that has been going around recently and, well, taken it to 11. Taken it that one step further and created the ultimate strategy. Strategy for what, you ask? Well, how does the idea of getting true AFK money farming, XP farming, and perhaps most specially of all, shiny farming happening at the same time. While again, literally, you don't even have to look at the game or move. You will have money pouring in, experience pouring in, and at the end of it, have a shiny waiting for you to catch. And, and again, I can't stress this enough, without even having to look at the game. My Switch went into, like, the darkened screen, you're clearly not here mode, while I was just letting this process happen in the background to prove a point for you guys. This is awesome. All right, this is fun. So what we're gonna do is get to a very special location on the map that lets you do something very special with the game. And by special with the game, yeah, we are talking about one of those classics, creative use of game mechanics. So head to this Pokemon Center in the desert to the right of the map, and then follow me along to this cave here. Enter into it, head all the way down to a room with a trainer in, and here is our base of operations. There is a collection of Pokemon here, right? You have Having a sea of them, there is Glamora, there's Lavatar if you're in Violet, then you've got Bagon instead, you've got Salandit, you've got yourself Sableye. Basically, every Pokemon that can spawn in this game, you can get a free shiny, well, multiple, multiple, multiple shinies of, again, while completely AFK, just have it produced waiting for you when you choose to look back at the game and catch it. That's exciting. How are we doing that then? Well, we'll get to the money and experience part later too, but how are we doing that then? Well, choose which Pokemon you are going to hunt. We will start with Sableye, as it's got a very distinctly different shiny color, and I do kind of like it, chiefly for the diamonds in the eyes. In any case, that means we need our level 3 sparkling power sandwich, of course we do, we're shiny hunting. So you can either use the one that lets you use any two Herbamistica, or if you have plenty of salties at this point, you can use the more direct war recipes like these, which are the easiest, quickest, least faff ways to get your sparkling power and encounter power level 3. So I'm gonna go for the dark one, a salty, a sweet, and a smoked fillet to go along with it. Now that we have this in place, what we want to do is stand in a very specific place, not too close, not too far back, around where you're seeing me stand, and then what will happen is one by one by one, Sableye will just keep popping out the wall, endlessly, over and over, like a conveyor belt of fresh babies. That was a weird thing to say, actually, now that I've said it out loud, but yes, I am still going to leave it in. Why? Shut up. And that's awesome. So we just stand here and watch it, right? Wait for the shiny. Okay, AFK, see, told you. No, no, that's not how this works needs a little bit more of setting up from you. This will only produce a maximum of 15 Pokemon, which means every 15 Pokemon you're going to have to reset it. And in that resetting is the magic. You can either A, every 15 Pokemon, open up your picnic, this will delete all of the wild Pokemon in the area, close your picnic, and then 15 more will spawn in. Open your picnic, close it, 15 more. Open your picnic, close it, 15 more. Open your picnic, close it, 15 more. And eventually, oh, lo and behold, there is the shiny Sableye, and we can go catch it. And by catch it, I mean run the gauntlet. <laughs> Oh, 
seriously, you might want to let's go battle your way through to actually arrive at your shiny before it wanders out of the spawn range. That's cool and all, but it's a bit tedious because it requires you to stand there watching for it and opening and closing picnics. And really, that's about as entertaining as watching a painting of grass growing dry. So, what we're going to do is abuse Let's Go Auto Battling to completely automate the process. You see, in this corridor of maximum glitchiness, because apparently they only put one spawn point for Pokemon in, or at least some of them, there is also a bit of flaw that our own Pokemon don't actually see as terrain. You see, they will get stuck in it, right here, wedged, and unable to return to you. And when they're unable to return to you, they'll just keep fighting. So once you've got your first 15 spawned in, all you need to do is run up to this spot, get your auto battler going, and they will eventually sink into the floor and be unable to move, and forever, and I do mean forever, for the entire half an hour duration of your sandwich, every two and a half seconds, they will kill a wild Pokemon and then force another one to pop out of the wall. Which means without you having to do anything, in 30 minutes, wedging your Pokemon here and having this auto battle chain, you will spawn 720 Pokemon. And given that that is more Pokemon than the odds of the shiny, yeah, you're, you're in luck there. So you just look back at the game and see if the shinies appeared. And if you didn't know, your Pokemon will not auto-battle a shiny. It will refuse to, so there's no worry of accidentally killing it or anything like that. It'll just be wandering around while its brethren continue to get slaughtered till again you look back at the game. How neat is that? Eat the sandwich, stand in this spot, do a picnic to refresh the area, wait for a few to spawn, put your Pokemon in let's go mode so it falls into this little wedge point, run back to the spot, and literally go do something else for half an hour, return to find a shiny to catch. That is pretty swish, and I'm pretty proud of this one. However, it goes further, I mentioned money and experience, and you're probably seeing how and why that's gonna happen. Because you're letting your Pokemon just farm and farm and farm and farm, you're getting experience, sure. It's not massive amounts, especially not on high-level Pokemon, but it's still like 40,000 or so over the time. That's not bad at all. And you're also getting the wild Pokemon material drops. Sableye Gems here. And what they sell for is 50 each. And you will get, over the half an hour, 100% 999, the maximum you can do. Which means, if you do this twice, two half hours, that's about 100k just for free, as passive for also hunting your shiny in an hour. And if you want to do this technique just as a money and experience farm, well you can just do encounter power level 2 for the type that you're after, and not waste any Herba Mystica and achieve this same result, and just let the AFK farming happen again for half an hour blocks. Go sell 999 materials, come back, let the farming happen. There are faster money making ways, but none of them are this uninteractive, hassle free, pain free, and generally just bloody awesome. This really, really is good. You want to target Sableye or Bagan slash uh, Lavatar, and they drop the most valuable ones in the area, at least to my knowledge, and that is about it. I also had to go with Lavatar just because I could, got one of them pretty quickly, took about 15 minutes of picnic resetting, so that's really nice to see too, add that to the old collection, and then I will address what you saw at the start with the Salazzles, or I should say the Salandits. Basically, they spawn a little bit differently through the Pokemon in the area, a little bit weirdly, which is a shame because I really want a female shiny Salandit so I can have a shiny Salazzle. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. In any case, they spawn in massive clumps, but in the ceiling. So what you're gonna have to do with these guys is run up and down the tunnel and keep making new huge clumps of them spawn in the ceiling. And because the shiny has a bright white tail and the clumps that are on the ceiling, again, beautifully made game, will dangle their tails through the ceiling. You can tell if one is shiny because its bright white tail will be dropping down from the ceiling. And then you can battle it by just aiming at it with L2 and throwing the Pokeball at it and it will trigger the encounter. So this is also a fantastic way to get shiny Celeste 
dazzle, but it does require a little bit more involvement from you. You can't do the wall pop out completely AFK method, so that is definitely a shame. Other than that then, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this, found it enlightening, and one hell of a fun use of, let's call it, this game's mechanics. For now then, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more Pokemon goodness. Consider supporting the future of this channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye.